Welcome to Farmer Simulator 19. Brand new game, literally come out on Steam today as a recording. And um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. So why do we get started? All right, so you've seen on the channel Farmer Simulator 17 maybe. Uh, I do like doing the automation side of things. Of course, this is brand new. Unfortunately, that means there's no massive mods out there that will let me do a lot of automation. But there is some mods out that you should get if you have FS19. In particular, mods by Giant Software themselves. So the map from um, the previous game, from SS7, FS17. Uh, and I apologize, my Spanish is going to be terrible. But Estancia Lepacho. Okay. Uh, sorry, English people don't always get taught Spanish in school. All right. And further down, we have a small tractor and a harvester and it's a header. So there's a few mods, but again, it's brand new. So, you know, we have to cut with vanilla mechanics to get started. And speaking of vanilla mechanics, let's take a look at what's new in the game. So heading into career, and let's just choose for save game. We have new modes. Now, in the previous games, it was easy, medium, hard. In this game, there's a new farm mode where you start with all the equipment placed and start with a few tractors and everything else. Uh, so that's the equivalent of easy, I guess. Medium is you start with quite a bit of money, but nothing. <laughs> no, no buildings, no land. Uh, and that's one of the big changes from the previous game in that you, you have to buy land. You don't buy fields as such. So we'll show you that once we get into the game. And in the hard mode, which is um, effectively, you start with like half a million, but it's all in loans. <laughs> so you've got to try and make money back while paying loans back. I think... In the middle mode, some of it's still alone, but not very much. So let's go with the middle mode for now. And you'll see, well, there are three maps. The two that go installed with the game are Ravenport. That's very much an American map. As you can see, there's an American flag. Um, sort of shades of California or, um, I guess, Midwest sort of areas. A little bit run down in places. Not very tidy, tidy sort of map. So quite different. Then there's Felsbrunn, which I think is Germany which is um, much more open. Probably the one we'll start on. It's the easiest one to, to, to look at, and you can see a lot a lot further in Felsbrunn. We'll show you that in a minute. And then Estancia de uh, which is uh, the same map, but slightly changed from the previous game. So why don't we start by looking at the... Let's look at the maps we're not going to go for first. So let's look at Ravenport and then we'll come back out and uh, I'll show you the other two maps and then we'll get started on actual mechanics. So I'll just to show you Ravenport. Okay, this is the Ravenport map. So as you can see, we've got quite a pretty area that we start in. We just head down downhill. Little windmill? Yeah, windmill. Okay. Um, head down here a little bit further. So if you played the easy mode, you'd have buildings all around here. You'd have some various farm buildings, and then your farmhouse would probably be right down there near that field. Um, we are in the middle mode, so we don't get that option. However, we do have lots of bits and pieces around. Uh, this is why I say about it being run down. There's lots of these little areas where there's just like junkyard stuff. I'm not sure if that's how the developers think of America, but... Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, in any case, um, though you can actually remove this, I don't think. At least not yet. They may well patch that ability in. Uh, you can get rid of the bushes, I suppose, with a plow. Um, but we're not going to worry about too much about that. And if you have a look on the map now, let's look at what you can actually buy. So here's the layout for Ravenport. And we're down here in the bottom right corner. And if we just press X to go to land, you'll see all these parcels of land have appeared. So for example, that river side there is 296,000. Okay, fair enough. This piece of land we're stood on is 362,000. Now, if you start with 500, that's going to be a problem, i.e. the hard mode. We have 1.25 million. Uh, let's look at the financial stuff. Uh, yeah, so 250,000 of it is a loan. But we can repay that if we wanted to. Or take more out. So looking at the parcels of land then, what have we got available uh, or what can we start with? If you wanted to build your farm sort of on this patch, that's 210,000 versus 362. That's 
a lot nicer to start with. <clears throat> the other thing as well is this field I think is filled with potatoes to start. These are filled with, uh, well, not as easy crops. Um, let's take a look. So um, potatoes. Yeah, so field 19 is potatoes. Field 24 is cotton, which is really hard to harvest without some special machinery. That's a new crop. Uh, also new in this version is oats. And I'm not sure if oilseed radishes are new, but uh, certainly oats and uh, cotton are new. I don't recognize those at all. Soybeans, uh, we don't have any of those. That would be nice if we did. Uh, canola is available on this field, and sunflowers is in 26. So if I were starting this map, I'd be tempted to grab field 19. Uh, it's kind of nice area. There's a huge amount of area that is beyond it. So if we just go down here a little bit, you'll see it's quite a large field. It's fairly flat. Doesn't have much room at the end of the field to turn around. So I'd almost be tempted if it didn't take longer to actually go up and down the field this direction rather than left and right. Because the, at either end, it's a little bit, um, yeah, there's not really much runoff. In any case, beyond the field. There's our crops and a bird. <laughs> Thankfully, they don't actually go and take all your seeds. That would that would be uh, that would be annoying. Is this sort of up up uh, scale meadow, if you like, that we could cut down all the trees? And you can't cut down trees unless you own the property, by the way. So you can't just go and you know just cut down the entire map. But hey, it's kind of a nice area, and it's a lot cheaper than than this area. But you do get less fields. But the field is huge. And if you want to start with a single crop, then, hmm, you know, pretty good. You can see the field input at the bottom right. It's got potatoes on it. It's growing at the moment. And it's fertilized 100%, weeded 0%. Changing weeding in this mode, I think I remember rightly, in this, uh, sorry, game. Uh, now you only need to weed when you can see the weeds. You can't preemptively just say, hey, I weeded just by running the, uh, the weeder over the, the crops. So that's something to look into. Also, I guess we'd better look at the admission system. Now, you used to, in, uh, in FS17, have to go to the fields and click on the missions. Uh, there is a nice uh, way to do that in this game. Where's the missions? Is that it? Yeah, contracts. I should say not missions. Um, there's nothing for field 16, which is where... Uh, sorry, field 19, sorry. So we can't really do that yet, but field 25 is harvesting the canola that's right next to us, but it's a tiny amount. I mean, that's not that's not even worth moving for, I guess. So yeah, I'm not gonna go into the contract for that. Anyway, this is the first map. If we have a look at the map itself, just bring it up. You'll see we're down here at the bottom right corner. The barn for grass and stuff like that is the very bottom of the screen as you're looking at it. And then lots of the larger fields in the middle of the map, but it does say it's quite a windy area, lots of, small roads that um, are sort of enclosed. So maybe we'll do this another time, but uh, this is one of the three maps. Let's quickly take a look at the South American map and we will then go on to our German map where we're probably going to start. And here we are. Now, one other thing as well is that you can't also mow grass unless you bought the land. So one of the, uh, the sort of cheaty ways to do things in, in FS17 also just go and mow the entire map. Apparently you can't do that anymore. So yeah, there is that. Anyway, this is a South American map, as you might imagine. But of course it should be um, sort of redone for FS19 in that there is now land parcels, I would have thought. Yep, there we are. So if we want to buy the original farm area, it's 562,000 pounds and we only get one field. Okay. Um, these happen to have mostly field areas, but there are these other areas, etc., surrounding the shop uh, further down. That is a huge area, 1.7 million. But I guess you could make it one heck of a field if you wanted to divide that up. So yeah, here we have a few bits and pieces uh, around. So yeah, nicely laid out map. I do quite like the South American one, um, but I think we'll start with one of the new maps given that this is a, a quick guide at uh, FS19. And of course, this, this map is available for download from the mod portal, which is from the main menu. 
on we go to Felsburn. And here's Felsburn. Now, this has a concrete pad to start us off, which is nicer than I think the um, the Ravenport one with its sort of rundown areas. Uh, so lots of nice area to place stuff in. Uh, we've got a few, few fields surrounding us, but you'll see there's like sort of alpine areas surrounding the map, obviously a mountain. Um, and then this starting area itself. And this starting area happens to be not all that expensive. If we go into the map, lots of regularly laid out fields, um, except for the south of the map, of course, but uh, we've got coastline running around. And then in the middle of the, the map, we start here. Now, if we go into land, this is where our farm pad is. It also happens to contain one field, but it's 181,000. So it's a nice and fairly cheap start. And there is a field right next to it, field 19, that's 174. So that is also quite nice. Uh, that's 300, that's 180. So that's also quite nice. Not sure what that building is up the top, but uh, both 18 and 19 are quite good. So we probably want to expand sort of this way and get this entire sort of block filled in by actually expanding our farm. That said, going to want to buy a piece of land first of all so we may as well just buy this press space yep 181,000 down and that's the first plot of land that we've bought we can now of course uh, cut all the grass on it we can cut the trees down and um i guess we could pave over it but uh no we're not going to do that just yet the downside is the crop that's growing on it it's sugar beet and uh sugar beet's kind of horrible to start the game out because it requires again specialist equipment that doesn't mean we can't get around the problem, however, and that's what we're going to start with. So you could place down a house. I think we're going to have to, uh, to be able to sleep through the night if we want to do that. And that's going to be costly. That's going to be 350,000 of our 1 million budget. But at least we'll have a house down. So let's get started by going pressing P and going to the store. The store then, at the very top of the screen, lots of different tabs well, five, um, and the first one is shop by brand. So yeah, it's a simulation game, so lots of different brands. The new one to uh, FS19 is, of course, the John Deere brand, which uh, has previously been modded in, but um, we can have a look through those. So you see there are a fairly, well, well, there's a range of tractors from the 6M series all the way up. And they get more and more expensive, of course. So they start under around 120,000 euros. We're playing in euros just because we're in Europe. And um, they go upwards from there. However, to start a farm out, I, I'd i like to be John Deere, but obviously we're based in Europe. They're, they are over here, don't get me wrong. Uh, John Deere's, that is. But they're also the first tractor. It's 142 horsepower, which would be nice, but it's a little bit um, expensive. I want to save as much money as possible and maybe make some more later. Maybe we'll convert across to John Deere later, because there is a new in this series, but we can get a little bit more efficient than that. So the tabs, we've got vehicles, we've got tools, essentially things usually dragged by the tractors. We've got objects, which are, uh, broadly speaking, that you can buy bales if you wanted to. You can buy bags of stuff uh, for your animals or things like that. Or, more importantly, what we'll probably be buying, which is the seed bags. And then you can buy pallets, and these are for fertilizer and herbicide and saplings. Another change in FS19 is that there are no, at least not yet, no placeables that make passive income. So that's things like solar plants, uh, greenhouses from the previous game. They could be used quite cheatily in the previous game. You could just line them up and they will passively create more and more and more passive income. Got a bit, you know, getting around the, the, the game's mechanics. So maybe we don't want to do that. Or at least the, the developers don't want us to do that. And then, of course, placeables. So these are lots of different uh, buildings you can put on your property. Like, for example, a vehicle workshop or a water station for animals, of course and a power washer, just to make everything look great. That said, the first big expense is going to be the farmhouse. And as I said, 350,000 euros, but it does let us sleep through the night, and now we can decide where to put it. Now, if you play the easy mode, you'll probably find that your house tends to be placed over here. Uh, if we just rotate, 
Uh, have I got this the right way around? Uh, that does look like it's the front. So it tends to be placed over here. The problem, however, is that you see where there's a sort of pad in the middle of the screen that's roughly the same sort of area that the house should be in. Except when I try and place it there, it's, uh, it's saying no, you can't do that. So if you want to place this roughly around here, we have to move in a little bit and over and that unfortunately it looks like that tree behind the behind there and that's why so we could try and move this around somewhere else here yeah, you see it's the tree move a little bit forward but from here yeah maybe that's about as close as i can get a little bit closer all right, that'll do. There we go. And we've got a house. If we step into the house, we should see that, well, first of all, the interior of the house is built for tiny people because the doors are all too small. Or at least that's the way it looks. <clears throat> Pictures on the walls of the previous maps. So that's uh, Goldcrest Valley, etc. That's where we just were in the South Americas. And again, quite small. Doors, maybe it's cottage. Cottages in England often have quite small doors. And uh, even a picture of our current farm on the laptop. So nothing much to do in here other than press R to sleep. And that gets you through the night. And a Willkommen, or however you pronounce that in Germany. Again, I'm not good with foreign languages. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, but that's not our only, only thing we want to place down. We want to go back to the farm. The, the, the store, sorry. And then we want to go into animal pens, and we get a dog. Yes, it's not as good as um, it's not as good as uh, dog meat from Fallout Four, but um, you know you, you've got to you've got to uh, take your pleasure where you can. And we can't put it unfortunately right next to the house. So uh, dog meat, our new dog, whatever we decide to call it, <laughs> uh, is going to be out back here. Um, Unless I can just go down the far end. If we go down the far end and then can we turn around? Will it fit there? I don't want to run the poor dog over by coming into the farm. But that's sort of nice, I think. Yeah. He or she gets his own little area. And we can go over and, uh, well, interact with our dog. So here it is. Yeah, there you are. Hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, it's a simulation game, so you can click on the dog and it will come and follow you. Yep. And then it will play with you, throw the ball, etc. Uh, but we can send it back home to its, uh, its little dog house and we can uh, press R to feed it. And it's going to be an absolute unit of a dog if I keep on uh, pressing R to feed the thing. But uh, yeah, we are going to dog house. Very odd, but uh, yeah, back to the main part of the game. And we need to buy some actual stuff. Now, I normally consider some kind of sheds around here. So if we have a look at the sheds, um, there's an easy shed. There is a, an easy shed two, an easy shed three. This is almost like an Ikea, <laughs> easysheds.com or something. I'm not sure if that's actually a real thing or if it's just in-game. If it is a real thing, lots of people are getting paid for it being a part of the simulator. In any case, uh, we can build sheds and that will just help... Um, stack things and all, all kinds of things like that i tend to like these where you have you have the ability to drive right through at least for for vehicles and um, maybe we have one of these for something like um i don't know um those pallets so if we have a look at this and we zoom out it's still quite large so if i rotate this um i'd almost want there's two way the, the shop is over here on the left hand side so I almost want a clear path through from the shop, so I may not want to absolutely take up all the room. And if you're playing on the pre-built map, this concrete pad in the centre right here is where your initial shed starts. So um, can we actually rotate that a little bit? Uh, yeah, it looks like we can. And then can we rotate the map a little bit? Is that going to line up? We put it right there. Hmm. 
maybe right there. I don't know, it doesn't leave, it doesn't leave us with a lot of room. There's that uh, great manhole, etc. So, yeah, we may want some room in the in the yard. So why don't I just put it there for now? Yeah, that'll do. And then we, we may not be coming through here, of course, but we will have that whole sort of uh, racetrack kind of area for uh, getting stuff around into this yard. So we just come around this uh, side road into the main farm here, and then we've got this kind of courtyard we can build around <coughs> and store lots of things. Speaking of things, we want to buy some vehicles. Uh, that's a, the main part of the game. So in small tractors, there are a few we can buy. The Voltra will be what I played in the previous game. Um, quite nice, by all means. Uh, but uh, we want something maybe a little bit different. Also, the Voltra, at least the small Voltra, the very, very cheap Voltra. Remember rightly, does it have any ability to have um, a front weight? N yeah, well, it has a weight built in, but you can't put any kind of attachments on the front of it, which is unfortunate. I don't... <laughs> this is the tiniest thing in the world, but it's quite cheap, don't get me wrong. It's 150 horsepower versus 115 for this Fent, but um, I don't know, it just, it just looks... it looks silly. <laughs> Seems like an odd thing to say, but uh, then looking at the Fent and the Stara. So the Fent's 115, the Stara's 105. New Holland uh, I starts at 100. And then Massey Ferguson 105. So there are a few options there. And just looking at the, the actual speed that these can get to, the Fent is actually up to 60 kilometers per hour. And all the others are all 40 until we get to the next Voltra series. And that, that Voltra is 121, at which point we can go and get the, the John Deere. So I'm not going to worry about that too much now. I'm going to go for the Fent, I think. It's fast and 115 horsepower. And we can actually upgrade it if we wanted to pay an extra 17 grand, but ooh, um, that'll take it to 150. But let's start out with a with a cheap, really cheap sort of underpowered thing. And the wheel brand we're not going to worry about. Standard front loader attachment, however we are. It'll be useful for manipulating lots of things in the farm. So that's an extra 1500. We can lease it if we want to. The initial leasing costs are 6200. But I think we're actually going to buy it. We're going to need at least one tractor to get started. And that then brings us on to whatever we're going to attach to it. So we're going to need a few things. First of all, let's look at the field. The field we're going to get is right here. And the first thing I need to do is plow that under. I don't want uh, to have to deal with sugar beets. At least I can't deal with them. At least not with leasing expensive equipment. So let's get rid of the sugar beets. It's our land. We can do whatever we want. And that's going to be straightforward. If we go into the tool section, we want a plow. And we can go for the cheap one or the slightly more expensive one. Um, yeah, this one, it only requires 85 horsepower. This one requires 180. And we can't support that. So let's just go for the cheap option. You can revolve around this to take a look at it, but it's just a cheap plow. Nothing excessive there. And that's now at the store. While we're at it, though, we can bring other stuff back from the... Well, we'll leave that another time. I need to actually go and get the, the plow started. So to get that started, let's just press tab until we get to the store. And here is our fence. So, yep, pretty good, as you might imagine. Uh, let me just double check my options, make sure everything's set up correctly. So, um, camera sensitivity is fine. Let's look at gameplay options. Let's look at off for all of these. These are the refill options. Uh, they help when you, when you have a helper doing the work for you, they'll go and buy stuff all on their own. Uh, I did that, I leave them on in the previous series that I did on FS17. But because I'm playing on this one, I just want to get as much of the gameplay as possible to so leave them all off. Uh, turn off the automatic engine start. So I've got control over that. Time scale, I'm going to uh, bring back to real time, but we'll up that in game. And let's just start this as um, Grey Farm in Germany. Plant growth is normal. We'll leave all the various options on, like plant withering, crop disruption, destruction, etc. Periodic plowing, lime, and weeds. Lime is basically keeping the yield high. And that's pretty much it. That's all fine. 
Uh, I don't need to change anything in here. You can turn on a radio if you want, but because of copyright, I'm going to have to leave it off. And then we're using euros, kilometers, and hectares. Uh, you can obviously change that to whatever your local preference, if you like. And here's our fence. It does look very, very old-fashioned, I know, but um, it, uh, it should be fine for us to use. And we're going to back up, attach, and head back to the farm. Now, as I was saying, the uh, the farm isn't all that far from the, the store here. Uh, we can just take a right from the store, head left, and our farm is pretty much the, the first sort of major property. There is a fish pond there. I don't think there is fishing in the game, but uh, yeah, there's probably everything else now with animals. Um, so our, our first property is coming up here on the right-hand side in a little while. There's our farmhouse, so as you can see, it's right next to the store, unlike Goldcrest Valley in the previous game. So, uh, yeah, we have enough room, and we can head in here. And we do have room to go straight through in this case. It's a fairly small tractor and load, so, yeah, there is still room. And as you can see, this is quite a small attachment. And as always, I try to... Well, oops, let's turn those uh, lights off. Uh, I try to always... Um, want to automate as much as possible and by automating in this case what we actually mean is plowing this field under so let's get ourselves lined up in the corner of a field and a helper you always want in a corner wherever you can get it right close to the corner as you can and press h if it's not close enough it will just basically saying yeah it's not com well it's completed Need to get on the field maybe there you go so the helper is just going to start i'm actually controlling this now and that helper is just going to go and plow the field. So you can just play it as fully sort of set back um, simulator that you don't have to actually manually drive if you don't want to. So off that goes and we can go and think about some other stuff. Now we are just about coming up to the end of the episode, uh, just showing you the start of the game. But uh, before I do, I just want to show you this kind of stuff that I'll be buying while our helper is turning around and uh, heading off down the field. Now, some of the stuff we'll want to be buying, I think, looking at the crops... Oh, he's lining himself up, or she, whoever it is. Is it he? Looks like he in the uh, the cab. Um, yes, where was I going? Crops. So, I think I'm going to go for soybeans. It's a, it should be a straightforward one to go with. Um, there are a few soybean fields on the, the, the map anyway. And they tend to sell for pretty good value. Um, where's the thing? There we go. So soybean, you'll see it has a very high value compared to all the rest. That's because your yield isn't as much as the rest. Um, this is per liter or per thousand liters. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, it looks like it's quite high, but you don't get as much from fields. Uh, but that does mean that you have less trips with a, a kind of a trailer to take it to market or anything like that. So. It's a nice crop to start with, and uh, we can always expand later. Which means we need to head to the store and start buying some stuff. So we need to want to, we want to buy a cedar, and there is a few to start off with. Um, the this upgraded version, the thirty grand Spirit R three hundred S, the Vadastad or whatever it is. I, I'm not going to pronounce that A correctly, of course. Um, yeah. So with a seed planter, you can sow fields, fair enough. But this also lets you seed directly, so we don't need to cultivate the field or plough it first. But we're just ploughing it under just as a matter of uh, principle to get rid of the previous crop. Uh, but this will let us do it all at once, and it's 30 grand. So I'm going to choose that straight away. I'm just going to buy it. Okay. And then I'm going to go back out. What else do we actually need? Well, we've got a cedar. I'm going to want to actually get seeds, of course, which means I'm going to want to be able to transport those seeds. Or if we're going to trailers, the only one I know of with some kind of flatbed truck that I can transport the trailers, they don't seem to get delivered to the, the, the farm, is if we go into this one and then press left here, we get to a bale loading wagon. And we can use that as a flatbed, at least to start off with, until I, like, until I find another one in the game. Or modded ones will come in, I'm, I'm fairly certain. Or there's a low loader as well, but this is a good, cheap option just to buy, to be able to transport a few bales, but more importantly, a few uh, sets of seeds. So we're going to buy that as well. 
And that also means we're going to want to be able to move those around and we're going to be buying a few bags of seeds. So let's just go in here and let's buy uh, three bags of seed. I think that was three. Okay. And we need some way of loading them onto the wagon. So if we just go to here, is it misc? Uh, no, that's not the right area. I want the front loading stuff. Here we are. So it's in the attachments or the, the tools, front loaders. And there is a John Deere version, but we'll leave that till we have the John Deere tractors. So next version up. This requires over 90 horsepower, which will do the job. So we'll buy one of you. And we're going to need a pallet fork. There are other things as well for bailing and everything else, but a pallet fork is the main thing to get started with. And buy one of you. And that gives me the basics I need to actually plant something. Uh, now, there will be a need for a weeder. And we may need to um, fertilize as well, but we'll come on to that next episode. Uh, what we're actually going to do is, obviously, once this helper is finished... Oh, you couldn't have just... Yeah, I'm going to have to go over the field manually once he's finished, just to clean up a few bit, bits and pieces. That's fairly normal. In any case... Um, sugar beet's not growing for long. Um, in any case, uh, I will be moving the stuff from the store back to here. In fact, let me just do one more thing, because we can just uh, purchase one more vehicle at the store, which is a car. Um, this is the modded car that you get. If we just go to details, we'll if you buy on Steam. It looks very unconventional. It's like a smart car version of a pickup truck. It is a bit weird as well. This this rear thing, um, sort of the area you would have a pickup truck, is actually a loader. So you can drop seeds into it if you want to, but... Uh, I'd rather just store the pallet if I'm, I'm perfectly honest. Um, yeah, so I'm not quite so sure about that one. And it has no wing mirrors. It has no no rear view mirror. Uh, so maybe we go for one of these two. Um, this one's more expensive, so I'm going to go for the cheap, old-looking pickup truck, and we'll buy that as well. Of course, that also means um, we can tab to it. And it's at the store, which is makes it handy to go and look at this other stuff. So yeah, here's the roughly si the size of it. This this trailer is not very big, but it should be able to fit three of these on it just fine once that uh, that tractor's finished in the field. And we can go and put the front loader on the tractor, and then put the, the bale loader, pick these up, put them on the back, and head back to the farm. And the same thing with, with this. Um, you can even, uh, if we wanted to just get it going, well, you can just not worry about transporting the stuff from the uh, from the shop to the uh, the farm. You could fill up from these bale uh, these pallets here. Just drive this right next to those, and you can refill it. But we're going to move everything to the farm anyway, at least for this first one, and we can come back later and do something else. Uh, so yeah, we've got plenty of stuff we can do. Um, I'm not sure if this will actually pull anything. <laughs> Um, let's see if it will actually pull any of these attachments. It does have a, it does have a tow point. Uh, yeah. Uh, I doubt that it will have much, uh, much look at this, but uh, let's have a look. Will it even attach? No, it won't even attach. Good. <laughs> I didn't think it would, but uh, it's nice to be able to have a vehicle where you can whip around the map in if you need to make any changes. So other than that, we've pretty much got the, the start of our map. We've decided what we're going to do, and next episode we'll go ahead and do that. But for now, uh, off we had a bit of a preview of the game, the improvements that have been made to it by Giant Software, and maybe you want to actually purchase it. If you do, it's available on Steam and other retailers now. This video is not sponsored, of course. I buy all the games uh, that, I, um, that I want to cover on the channel. Ooh, actually, can we lower that, that tailgate? Um, will that let me load the tailgate? F1, um, that's just a tension belt. Uh, it'd be a shame. If I could load that, uh, load that rear tailgate, I could probably put one of these pallets on it and then drive it away, but, uh, it's fine. We've got a truck for that, a, a trailer for that. All right, so feel free to give it a like if you'd subscribe or share if you've liked the episode. And, uh, of course, let me know in the comments below if you want to see more episodes on this.
I appreciate if you don't. It is a very relaxing game. You can just start to build up your farm empire, of course. And uh, I will hopefully see you in the next episode for some more Farming Sim 19. If we do, great. As always, guys, thanks for watching.